the Halloween special is a lot of fun uh, from what I, I've seen. Uh, I've got like five minutes left, admittedly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, what, you know, how did the uh, concept and the story come about? Because obviously you did the Christmas special, but what was it? How did the Halloween special come about? So when we originally were picked up, <clears throat> it was only for eight episode seasons. And then there was a season that we we wrote so fast and furiously that we called Hulu and we were like, can we just do a holiday special too? And that's where the Christmas special came from. And then after that, they started picking us up for 12 episode seasons, knowing that we liked to write specials because part of solar is, you know, TV writers getting to make fun of writing TV in a, in a bit of a way. And then the original idea for the Halloween special, I mean, we love the Simpsons, you know, Treehouse of horror, like, Halloween specials and all TV shows are just like a, you know, a proud tradition. And so we just wanted to do something where Corvo was, was everything was too spooky. That was the <laughs> original thought. Yeah, when Mike first came in the room, uh, we couldn't stop laughing at the idea of him just saying everything was too spooky. And we're like, well, that's it. That's Candy it. corn? And then, <laughs> and then loving TV too, I think the idea of bringing back this like character from our childhood was was really when it became like oh yeah now we have a halloween special right bringing back this guy and just writing all of oh, his bringing back little, a type a legally clearable uh, uh, sorry a legally clearable although we did get the voice of the original one that we can't say the name of yeah so we John got the original happens voice. to play a type of character you may have seen before uh but getting to write all his little ditties and limericks was like the most fun and also just sure. sort of making fun of the Halloween industrial complex like in California we have in the valley where Mike lives they have these is it what is it called it's like there's one street that just goes Boney insane. Island there's a Boney Island. Boney Island that does like huge like starting in September walkthroughs and my kids love Halloween and I love Halloween and uh we wanted to like be the opposite of the peanuts Halloween special not yeah it's uh I mean it's still charming at least <laughs> <laughs> it's a little um, dirtier yeah a little there you go that's the only major difference <laughs> there are some there are a couple halloween celebrity cameos it's you know it's and that's the thing i, I yeah, love the show is that you guys always draw in uh some of the you know most awesome voice uh voice actors there we go words um and since you mentioned the the name that we can't mention um i am curious you know with those those uh limericks and ditties as josh put it uh did you borrow any from that uh mm -hmm. or was that all just you guys no that was all that was all my dharma who wrote the episode uh we were just like give us hundreds of of little big like pun filled beginnings of horror stories to choose from and then we chose from a bunch of those <laughs> and, and then Halfway through the episode, it starts falling apart where he's just like, this one's about a dead bride, you know, <laughs> like, like he's run out of puns. Um, but yeah, we had a blast writing, writing all those pun filled openings. So then was the uh, the Smash Mouth joke that we see, was that actually from it, it just it falling apart? Or was that you guys already like having that joke in mind ahead of time? That was once you've heard that many pun jokes throwing in one that even Corvo is like, wait a minute, <laughs> yeah. are you doing lyrics now? <laughs> Breaking your own game a little bit is always fun. So what was it then like sending Yumulak to hell? I mean, that's such an interesting uh, story thread. And, you know, obviously with aliens, it's not one that's expected. You'd expect them to go to their own afterlife, but here he is in hell. What was it? What was that like, you know, exploring that element? It's funny, we wanted it to look and feel like scary stories to tell in the dark art because those books scared the shit out of me when I was a little kid. Um, and I think doing it, doing it in black and white and like that bit that he thinks sci-fi is cooler intrinsically yeah. than horror stuff makes me laugh really hard. I, I love it. It was uh, almost like a mistake. Like they fucked up having him go down there and now they're having to deal with the fact that this alien who basically is like, I've been to space. You think this is going to scare yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> reverse torture right <laughs> yes this is hacking this is like 90s tim burton stuff <laughs> yeah him him torturing everybody in hell was the fun twist for us i uh i literally have a scary stories in the book or scary stories to tell in the dark collection uh off camera oh That's really oh, i love it I, uh, there's so many good stories in that the one that freaked me out was when the parents turn into alligators and i remember as a kid being like man i hope that can't really happen <laughs> <laughs> 
that would be uh that'd be terrifying uh to say the least regardless of age <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no well, i wouldn't mind it but as a kid it'd be yeah I wouldn't yeah mind it. <laughs> Well, I'm getting the rap signal. So thank you all so much for taking the time to chat. Always a pleasure to get to talk about this show, especially with you all. So thank you. Uh, you know, I know people are going to love this special. I know I don't need to spread the word, but I'm going <laughs> to. We you. appreciate it. Screen Rant is a big one for us. So we really appreciate I it. I love you guys.